in Hardanger, the first thing that you will want to stitch is your cluster blocks or satin stitches. Cluster blocks are groupings of five satin stitches over four fabric threads, and when worked or stitched on a diagonal, each group of five satin stitches is stitched in alternating directions. Let me demonstrate. From your beginning point, as you can see here with your um, thread coming up to the top of your fabric and a three inch or more tail on the back side of your fabric, you will want to count over four fabric threads to the right. You can insert your needle, but before pulling your needle through, you will want to come up back at the beginning point in line with your first at your from your first point up one fabric thread. Repeat this same step, counting over four fabric threads to the right and coming up one fabric thread above your working thread. You will repeat this, completing five satin stitches in a row. This will be your first cluster block. And before stitching your last satin stitch in your cluster block, you'll want to think of where your next stitch is going to be. And since we are working on a diagonal up to the right, You'll want to insert your needle at the point where your last stitch will be completed and you'll want to work in the direction of your next cluster block which is going to be stitched up and in to the right. So from your ending point of your last cluster block count up four fabric threads, insert your needle and pull through. Now stitching again in this same hole, you can turn your fabric if it's easier for you and remember to stitch in the next hole over. As I continue stitching, you'll be able to see a pattern emerge. Keep in mind, once one cluster block is completed, you'll be alternating directions. On this cluster block that I'm stitching here now, you'll see that on the chart, we are going to be making a turn. And to make a turn to go in the opposite direction in this instance, typically if we are continuing at our diagonal, which you can see we do not have room for, I'd be going up here. 
But since we are turning and going back up and to the left, I am going to stitch and come up in the same hole that I was currently coming down in. From this point, I will go up and count four fabric threads. And I will come out one fabric thread to the left at this point. Now I can continue stitching my cluster block. And repeating that same pattern and continue following my chart. When you have a straight run of cluster blocks, for instance here, I have one cluster block and then I have another one on top where I'm no longer turning and going at a diagonal. What I am doing is on my very last satin stitch in the cluster block, I finish it like normal, but I cut over at a diagonal and come up four fabric threads and over four fabric threads to begin my next cluster block. This puts just a nice little diagonal stitch going across on the back side of my on the back side of my piece. Because you always want to be mindful of what your thread is doing on the back side of your fabric. The goal for Hardanger is to keep the back side of your piece as neat as the front side of your piece. Here's another area where I am coming up to a straight run of satin stitches in cluster blocks. So I'm finishing my last stitch in the cluster block. I'm counting over four fabric threads and up four fabric threads so everything is still in line. And I am going to start my next cluster block. Now that I have reached the end of my satin cluster block row, again being mindful of the back side of my piece, I will want to travel back on the back side of my fabric under my cluster blocks that I just stitched to get back to the point of where I want to start another cluster block. Once I travel on the back side, I can continue stitching in my cluster blocks. Now that I've worked myself over to the other side, you can see that my working thread is getting rather short. I will want to take that thread and bury it on the back side of my fabric piece. And that is the end of my first thread. So what I will want to do is go back to the beginning part where I had my three inch or longer tail. I will want to thread that onto my needle. To thread that onto my needle. And travel it back underneath my cluster blocks that I stitched. So then the finished side of my bell pull will be as neat as the front. In order to start my next thread, 
I'll want to bury underneath the back side and continue stitching. For the cluster blocks in the center of a cutwork area, you'll want to find the starting point. By going directly over from your cluster blocks, finding it on the chart, and lining it up. Again, you will want to leave and at least a three inch tail on the back of your piece. And stitch your cluster blocks around. Once you have gone all the way around, you'll want to travel on the back side of your fabric to complete the center cluster blocks. You'll also want to bury your working tail on the back side of your fabric as well. And the reason we are burying on the back side versus just stitching as we are going and say for instance coming across here and stitching it is because we do not want any threads coming across we do not want any threads coming across here where we are going to be cutting. Otherwise, those threads get risk of getting cut. And from here, I can continue stitching until all the blue stitches are finished.